Next on Current News, threats and warnings. Tough talk from the president aimed at Iran after that country's leaders started beating war drums. Years ago, Current News brought you the story of a Brooklyn girl who was confined to a wheelchair and blessed by Pope Francis. I'm Tim Harfman, and now I'll have an update on her health and her faith. That story is coming up. The mega event to fortify the faith of young people in Queens, Steubenville, is topped off in a special way involving vocations. Plus, he's 11 years old and a college graduate. You won't want to miss what he's planning for the future. It concerns God and science. The news starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Fawbless. A war of words tonight between President Donald Trump and Iran. The commander-in-chief warning the president of the Islamic State against threatening the U.S. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo accused the Iranian government of behaving like the mafia. Karen Kaifa has the latest from Washington. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says the president isn't to blame for escalating political tension with Iran. He was responding to comments made from them, and he's going to continue to focus on the safety and security of American people. On Sunday night, President Trump tweeted a warning to Iran in all caps. Never, ever threaten the United States again, or you will suffer consequences the likes of which few throughout history have ever suffered before. Trump appeared to be responding to Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, who said Sunday that a U.S. war with Iran would be the mother of all wars and that peace would be the mother of all peace. Also Sunday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo delivered a speech in which he expressed support for the people of Iran, but sharply criticized its leadership. The level of corruption and wealth among Iranian leaders shows that Iran is run by something that resembles the mafia more than a government. The back and forth comes amid the reinstatement of U.S. sanctions on Iran after Trump withdrew from an Obama-era deal lifting multilateral sanctions if Iran reined in its nuclear program. Democrats say Trump's approach is moving things backward. The president got rid of the agreement. So now we're left with military threats uh, only. Uh, and we're back to where we were without the agreement. The current rhetoric, similar to Trump's threats of fire and fury against North Korea last summer, that eventually cooled to a June sit-down with Kim Jong-un. Since then, however, Trump has privately expressed frustration over a lack of progress. In Washington, Karen Kaifa, Currents News. Meeting Pope Francis is amazing. I still see the works of him today. Paralyzed Brooklyn teenager Julia Buzesi. Currents News first met her when Pope Francis blessed the young woman three years ago. The amazing encounter took place when the Holy Father visited New York in 2015. Today, Julia says her life is filled with miracles. And Currents News' Tim Harfman is here with the story. Tim, we all love her. What do you have to tell us? That's right, Liz. It started when Julia was bit by a tick. She felt sick and went numb. She became paralyzed, but doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. That's when she met the pontiff at JFK Airport, and their brief encounter turned into years of miracles. For 15-year-old Julia Brzezzi, the new elevator outside her Brooklyn home lifts her wheelchair and her spirit. I'm so grateful, and it's like amazing to have it. Um, it's kind of a life changer for me. After years of having to be carried up and down stairs by her family, the paralyzed teen calls it another miracle since meeting the Holy Father three years ago. Meeting Pope Francis is amazing. I still see the works of him today. As Francis arrived at JFK Airport in 2015, hundreds of cheering Catholics greeted him on the tarmac. Julia waited anxiously in the front row. He got out of the plane and I immediately started crying. That's when the emotional teen had a moment with the smiling pontiff. He put his hand on my head and then on my face. And um, like at that moment that he touched me and um, blessed me, like I felt like it was going to be okay. It was a brief encounter Julia's father, Enrico, thought he would never see because his daughter was suffering from Lyme disease. I was fearful for Julia's life. She, she was dying on us and nobody was able to give us any answers. Julia was bit by a tick and later paralyzed. Doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. But soon after the Holy Father blessed his daughter, Enrico says he started seeing miracles. An outpouring of support from the public helped Julia receive treatment. On the first three days of treatment, Julia regained her upper body strength, her, um, her mental status. She started feeling her toes. I mean, we saw a tremendous improvement on treatment. 
Today, pills and IVs keep Julia alive, but she says her main source of medicine is her faith. My faith has definitely kept me strong. I've kind of depended on it because I feel like if I have strong faith, I don't really need anything else. And although she isn't able to walk, Julia is up and running thanks to her new chairlift. One of the first things she did when she got it was she scouted out local art schools and uh, applied for volunteer opportunities to teach kids how to paint. You know, so she got really excited about it. An excitement Julia says she would have never felt had it not been for Pope Francis. Meeting him was life-changing. I'll never forget it. And Julia tells me she hopes to start a foundation to educate others about the symptoms and treatments for Lyme disease, Liz. Oh, Tim, it's always a great story when we talk about Julia. Without that wheelchair lift, how was she able to even receive an education? Well, she was homeschooled, but this past year she started as a freshman at Zavarian High School in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Uh, health issues caused her to leave early every day, but she hopes that with her continued treatments and that chairlift, she'll be able to, to join her friends this fall. All right, Tim, thank you so much for that update on Julia. Police are on the lookout for a man who broke into the rectory of Our Lady of Perpetual Help in South Ozone Park. The thief pried open a window and crawled inside. Detectives said the suspect took $75 in checks, $40 in cash, a bottle of juice, and a bag of chips. The break-in occurred in the pre-dawn hours of July 19th. No one in the priest's residence was injured. Anyone with information about the crime is asked to call the NYPD's Crime Stoppers hotline at 1-800-577-TIPS or text the police at CRIMES and then enter TIP 577. All calls and messages are kept confidential. A court victory for supporters of the sanctity of life. They broke no laws gathering outside an abortion clinic in Queens. The big march for life takes place in Washington annually, but every Saturday since 2012, people have assembled outside a center in Jamaica urging women not to have an abortion. New York State sued, claiming harassment. Now, a federal judge has ruled the pro-lifers never harassed anyone. The future of the Catholic Church is in the hands of the next generation and thousands of young men and women were in Queens for a major event to build up their faith. Currents News Katie Ingeser reports on the wrap up to Steubenville, NYC. An energetic crowd of young people demonstrating that God lives in them. Whether it's cheering each other up or just offering their sense of prayer that they want to do for you. I really felt that that was the most incredible thing I felt in this retreat. 2,000 young people have spent three days together at St. John's University in Queens for Steubenville, NYC. The whole theme of this conference has been the idea that God reveals himself to us, that he wants us to know him. Too often that important message is overwhelmed by a culture of social media and pop stars. Most friends don't go to church, they just want to hang out in the streets, do all bad stuff. Stimulating the faith of young people is essential for the future of the church. The research center that studies the Catholic Church, CARA, asked millions to peg the age when they drifted away from religion. Almost three quarters said it was between 10 and 20. I never like was open to God and stuff. I was always close-minded and I always used to always think one way and my family would always have a problem with that. Other youngsters started to doubt during troubled times at home. When I was little, when I was three years old, my mom, my mom came here to this country and we were away, we were apart for like 10 years. Steubenville helps young people fire up their faith and they are welcoming the chance. I was having come some concerns back home about which, would a Catholic do this or would a Catholic do that? The faith is growing and sometimes they can have a weakened faith if they don't can nourish it and don't understand it. Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio celebrates the closing mass of Steubenville after three days filled with talks, good fellowship, and God. Uh, it's good to be away sometimes from your own circumstances. You reflect better. An emotional moment near the end of the event, the audience is asked who might dedicate themselves entirely to God through a religious vocation. Dozens head up to the stage. A special bonus from Steubenville, NYC. At St. John's University in Jamaica, Katie Angusar, Currents News. Terrorism has not been ruled out in a deadly Toronto shooting that has left two people dead. A man described what he heard. I heard at least 20 shots. 
right, in, in, in intervals. You know, clipping spent, reloading, clipping spent, reloading, clipping spent. That's what I heard. And then I saw the carnage as I ran down the street here to kind of follow the gunfire, I guess. A young girl and a teenager were killed during the rampage along a busy avenue. The suspected shooter is also dead. The duck boat that capsized during a storm in Missouri last week was raised today from the bottom of a lake. Several divers and a barge crane were used in the process. The boat went down after a severe thunderstorm on Thursday. It sank 80 feet. 31 people were on board at the time. 17 passengers died. Tia Coleman lost nine family members and said it's a miracle that she survived. Somehow I managed to get to the boat. These beautiful people, angels, I don't know who they were. They pulled me up. And when they pulled me up from the boat, I didn't see any of my family. But I believe I survived by God and by Good Samaritan. Tia Coleman lost her husband, three children, and five other members of her family. The Pope wants to prevent more deaths in the Mediterranean as migrants cross the dangerous waters. In recent weeks, dozens of refugees have drowned while trying to reach the coasts of Europe in search for a better life. The Holy Father made his plea yesterday at the Vatican. Rivolgo un accurato appello affinché la comunità internazionale agisca con decisione e prontezza onde evitare che simili tragedie abbiano a ripetersi. Francis also called on governments to guarantee security and respect for the dignity of the migrants. A new attack against the Catholic Church from Nicaragua's Daniel Ortega as thousands of anti-government protesters take to the streets in boisterous opposition. The crowds were in the capital, Managua, over the weekend to call on the embattled Nicaraguan president to resign. He originally asked the church to mediate a dialogue before rejecting what they said. At least seven churches were vandalized Friday night. Four gunmen invaded a Catholic church in Pakistan. The attackers beat up worshipers and fired shots into the air. The thugs also vandalized several sacred objects and tried to set fire to the building. Anti-Christian violence has grown recently in Pakistan. Coming up on Currents News, President Trump's controversial summit with Vladimir Putin has been getting mixed reviews from politicians. But what about everyday Americans? Trump supporters living in the largest retirement community in the U.S. weigh in. Changing how the country is ruled, a top priority in Cuba, will tell you why proposed reforms to the Constitution are fueling heated debates. Pope Francis planning a get-together with a few thousand close friends from over 200 dioceses. The gathering of Italian youth in Rome, an opportunity to pray with the Holy Father ahead of the Synod on young people. Do you have a story idea, something happening in your parish we should know about? We want to hear from you. Keep this email handy, newstips at thesalesmedia.org. We will be right back. President Trump fired off another tweet this morning defending last week's summit with Vladimir Putin. Mr. Trump wrote of the meeting between the two men, quote, I gave up nothing. We merely talked about future benefits for both countries. The Trump administration has confirmed that plans are being made for another summit this fall at the White House. The president faced criticism in official Washington after his face-to-face -face meeting with the Russian leader. Now Trump supporters are speaking out. Gary Tuckman reports on what voters are saying in America's largest retirement community. The Villages, Florida is a popular place for Republicans to retire, making it easy to find people who voted for Donald Trump for president. But for some Trump voters, things went south this week, especially following President Trump's presentation as he stood next to this. Russian President Vladimir Putin. On this day, hundreds of Republicans in the villages showed up at a forum attended by Florida candidates for governor, which was a good place to ask Trump voters about what happened in Finland. When Donald Trump said there is blame for the United States as well as Russia, he put blame on this country, does that trouble you? Um, it's Donald Trump. You know, you sort of expect that. But does that trouble you? Do you think uh, the United States should be blamed? No, I don't think the United States should be blamed. So should Donald Trump not have said that about his country? He says a lot of stuff he should not say. But then there are Trump voters like Dick Hoffman, 
I think he's doing a wonderful job. I love the fact that he just plays the press like a Stradivarius. Voters who say the president has nothing to apologize for. Are you a little uncomfortable with how comfortable he was with Vladimir Putin? Didn't bother me a bit. You didn't think it was deferential to him? what went on in their meeting before that. Well, no one does, and that's the problem, except for Donald yeah. Trump and Vladimir well, Putin. Okay, I have faith in him. What Donald Trump said when he was standing next to Vladimir Putin mm -hmm. was regarding meddling, Russian meddling. He mm -hmm. goes, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. So what does that mean to you, strong and powerful? What did he say that was so powerful that convinced Donald Trump that... He's strong and powerful in the way he said it. I mean, you... Does that sound a bit creepy to you for Donald Trump to be talking about the Russian leader, strong and powerful? I mean, I is think that the his... Way you're, the way you're questioning me with that, you're quest questioning me in a very strong and powerful way. No, I don't see that as a big deal. Many of the Republicans here have been alive for 13 presidents. They've seen a lot. And some, while continuing to support their president and their party, are a bit wistful. You were born when FDR was president. You've seen FDR, you've seen Truman, you've seen Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, up until Donald Trump today. You said you love Donald Trump, but would you be more comfortable if Ronald Reagan or Dwight Eisenhower were president today? If Ronald Reagan were to run again, yeah. Viewpoints from Republicans in America's largest retirement community. Gary Tuckman, The Villages, Florida. Tackling religious persecution. For the first time, the U.S. State Department is calling worldwide leaders to Washington tomorrow. The focus will be on the violence suffered by believers, especially Christians. Ahead of the international summit, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is calling religious freedom a fundamental human right. More than 40 foreign ministers and 80 delegations will attend. The Cuban National Assembly is debating a new constitution for the country. The updated document would eliminate the term communism, limit the president to two five-year terms, recognize private property, and legalize same-sex marriage. The new constitution would bring the most important changes to Cuban law since 1976. Over 400 Syrians have evacuated the country with the help of Israel. Among those escaping the war, the White Helmets, famous for helping others trapped in Syria's never-ending conflict. Jomana Karachi reports on the dangerous mission. At the height of the Syrian civil war, often it was the White Helmets who were the first on the scene. With no local police or emergency services, Residents in rebel-held areas turned to these Syrian volunteers recognized by their iconic protective gear. They have all chosen to risk their lives to save others, and that makes every single one of them a hero. The group rescued tens of thousands of people caught up in the conflict, often saving the war's most vulnerable. Like this baby girl. After 12 hours of digging and drilling, volunteers finally reached this two-week-old baby, trapped under the rubble. But now it's the white helmets themselves who are being rescued. As town after town in southern Syria is reclaimed by the government, there's been increasing concern over the fate of the white helmets. The regime and the Russian allies have long labeled the group as terrorists, accusing them of staging chemical attacks and faking rescues. In an internationally coordinated mission and an unprecedented move, Hundreds of Syrians, including White Helmet volunteers and their family members, have been evacuated out of the country via Israel into Jordan. The group will stay there before being resettled in Germany, Britain and Canada. The three countries, Jordan says, have pledged to take them in. Canada has praised the work of the White Helmet, saying, quote, We feel a deep moral responsibility towards these brave and selfless people. The UK's Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, has described the rescue as, quote, fantastic news and has thanked Israel and Jordan for acting so quickly on the request. He says the White Helmets are the bravest of the brave, adding that in a desperate situation, this is at least one ray of hope. A moment of international action in a conflict where that has rarely brought any good. This time, it may have saved hundreds of lives. Jamana Karache, Istanbul. An elderly priest in Scotland who was attacked and robbed wants to visit his assailant in jail. Father Patrick Hennessy was victimized when 40-year-old Michael McTaggart broke into the rectory last May. The thief was caught and sentenced to a four-year prison term. Father Hennessy says he feels sorry for him and wants to visit him in jail because he believes McTaggart needs pastoral care. 
With the World Meeting of Families coming up next month in Ireland, Pope Francis has a pretty busy schedule. That includes a session soon with thousands of young people. Cody Williams has that report. The Italian dioceses estimate that more than 50,000 people will participate in an encounter the Pope will have with young people in Rome in August. It will take place in the symbolic and spacious Circus Maximus at 6.30 p.m. Pope Francis will hold dialogue with the youth and pray for the Synod in October, which will be dedicated to them. However, the event will not end there. On Sunday at 11 a.m., before praying the Angelus, the Holy Father will meet with them again. This time, it will take place in St. Peter's Basilica, where the youth will be celebrating Mass. The Pope is not expected to preside over the ceremony, but he will bless the gifts the young people will bring to World Youth Day in Panama. The San Damiano Cross, associated with the Italian patron, St. Francis of Assisi, and a sculpture of Our Lady of Loreto. This will be one of Pope Francis's important encounters in the month of August, which include his trip to Ireland to participate in the World Meeting of Families. In Rome, Cody Williams, Currents News. Up next on Currents News, an 11-year-old Florida boy just graduated from college. It's a pretty big deal, right? Well, wait until you hear his career goal. Science and faith may one day merge in the mind of a young genius. We'll be right back. Most 11-year-old boys, safe to say, are immersed in video games and sports. Well, one young man in Florida has proven he's not your typical preteen. The story of a young Einstein who has set his sights on degrees and the divine is sure to inspire. Present to you the graduating class of 2018. Hundreds of students achieving a dream. And while congratulations are in store for each graduate, all eyes were on one in particular. William Miles. It's very exciting. William Malice has every reason to be excited. He's 11 years old and just earned an associate's degree, but he's keeping the accomplishment in perspective. About as difficult as anybody else going there. The humble young man left a lasting mark at St. Petersburg College. I am totally fascinated by William and the work that he has done. He's extremely brilliant very open and collaborative. Brilliant indeed. William could do simple math at one and a half years old. By age four, he learned algebra. And age five, an Ohio State University psychologist declared him a genius, a designation he insists does not set him apart from his peers. I'm gifted in what I'm gifted in, and other people are gifted in other things. Now at 11, with one degree in hand, he plans to keep reaching for the stars. I want to be an astrophysicist. And boldly go where no scientist has gone before. I want to prove to the world that God does exist through science. Isn't that amazing? He'll attend the University of South Florida to make that dream come true. Williams' parents say he has always been on the fast track, but that may be a bit of an understatement. He was just nine years old when he earned his high school diploma. Good for him. That is Currents News. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Liz Faublas. Set your DVR to record this program so you never miss it because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.